the drama starts. Lap 30, eight laps to go. Sam Dobie hoping to take advantage of these lapped cars. Koleski going dives on the right side. Very aggressive here. This is lap four. The two Viceroy's, Bill Frazier ahead of Matt Melissa. Frazier's out. Frazier hit the grass. You hit that tire wall, your day is done. You know, it's lap 20. The Williams still trying to get around the Terrell team. So he'll go around the lap car and around those at the same time. <laughs> at the same time. He's got the inside corner of Willie Rod Kirby. Yes, he will. He will get him on the inside. Dino Maria leading us all into Moss's corner. Beauty. As uh, his right side will clip the grass a little way 
180, no, a 360. Oh. Who will yield going into this corner? It's really not meant for too wide as it will be Gernot. Gernot will yield. Lots of smoke picking up from that Williams car. He is pushing it to the absolute limit. 26 of 30 now, only four laps to go. He's going to get the run coming out the final corner. He's going to pull up side by side with the leader. It's going to be a drag race for the finish. Who is going to get there first? It's going to be... If you were to tell a race fan that there is a track that weaves through the mountains, has 154 turns, and is nearly 13 miles long, they'd probably assume you meant a rally stage. But reality is weird because it's not for rally cars, it's a paved circuit course that's been exalted by drivers for nearly a century. It's the Nürburgring and it plays host to today's race as we get ready to watch round eight of the Lotus 79 Sunday Grand Prix series, and you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hi, I'm Joe Peek, and with me in the booth is Mick Claridge. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. The Lotus 79 is considered one of the more beastly cars on the iRacing service, and the Nürburgring is considered one of the more beastly tracks as well. It's a perfect match, if not a terrifying one. To really show you what we mean, here's our track guide of the two together. All right, we've got Yuhan Norlampi in the GSRC Lotus 79, so let's do a lap around the Nürburgring. First corner up is the North Curb, and the downhill braking will make it easy to overshoot it. Now we're going to skip ahead to the important parts of the lap since we don't have time for a full one. A critical set of corners is High Oaks. This right-left combo takes you onto a long, flat-out stretch where you won't be braking until Ehrenberg. Make sure you get a good exit. Up ahead, the Swedish cross is flat out, but make sure to stay to the left and brake as deep as you dare. Ehrenberg has some good camber, but it's gone wrong for all kinds of drivers over the years. Still, you're likely to see some attempts at overtaking here. Skipping over the foxhole to compression, you've got a blind swing into Outenauer Forst. As the track weaves back and forth, you're constantly slowing the car. Take it wide into the last left-hander so that you can get onto the power early as it veers back right. Later on in the track, once we're heading downhill, you've got to weave through the Spiegel curve and then get ready for miss, hit, miss. Use the apexes like the name implies. Still plunging downward in elevation, you've got the awkward braking for Defense Valley. There's no room to the outside, so be sure not to lock the brakes. Fast forwarding to the bottom of the great climb, the Lauda kink won't require a lift, but Bergwerks is as critical as ever. Send it in deep, but always be sure to bring it back in for that late apex and then get on the power early. You won't be breaking all the way up the hill until here at Stylestrecke. I've always found it hard to get the car to turn in here, no matter which car I'm in. Be easy on the throttle on your way out to avoid wheel spin, then line up the car for the carousel. It is going to be very bumpy through here, and you really can't get back fully on the gas until you're out of the banking. Once again jumping ahead, let's look at the ice curve. Supposedly it's called that because it takes a long time to dry in wet weather, but I think it's just hard to find grip in general. Stay off the curbs and try to straight line these S's. Make sure to line up the car on the left, and though you still get light over the jump into Flans Garden, you won't get air like most cars do. Double apex the uphill, and then we're going to skip over to Swallowtail. You're slowing and turning with a fast right-hander, but be sure to keep the car tucked to the right for the best line over the crested left-hander. Pretty quickly, you've got to swing through the mini carousel, which flies by much faster than its bigger cousin. Then comes the most important corner on the track. Gallows Hill. Getting through that first bit cleanly is important so that you can get your foot flat to the floor and power your way out to the Dottinger Hoa. This thing goes on for over two kilometers. At the end of it is Tiergarten. It's just a quick squiggle, but then Hohenron presents a lot more difficult proposition of slowing while turning and then avoiding the tall curbs on either side. The weirdly named Turn 13 is all that stands between you and the finish. So with that, we've now completed a lap around the Nürburgring. They see a lap around the Nürburgring, but we're getting ready to grid up since they've already had qualifying uh, during this week. So let's go through your starting order. It is going to be Steve Bycroft on the pole with Justin Albrecht starting in second. Sergio Fernandez will be starting in third, and then Matt Wood will be on the outside of that row. 
Gernot Frisha, not as good. He's going to be starting in fifth. He said so himself. He doesn't like this track. Chris Bauman will be next to him in sixth, and Timu Vascalampi in P7. Sami Toikala in eighth, and then you've got Marco Sanfilippo in P9. John Stevens will round out the top ten. And could you take the rest of it, Joe, please, because my computer has crashed. Okay, it's 11th for Kendrick Taylor with Timothy Reed starting in 12th. Pablo Suarez will be P13. Xavier Sanchez will start in 14th position. Danilo Sanfilippo, P15 for him. Barry West in the 16th position and Robert Simpkins in 17th. Alessandro Parigi, 18th. Then you got Bill Tyler, 19th. Keith Hunter, 20th. Rohner, 21st. And Sarles in 22nd as the engines are already revving. Green flag is out off the line. How's it going to be down into the north curve? So far, so good as everybody packs together in this narrow track. And I think they've made it through that first turn successfully. Up at the front, Bycroft has got his lead, but not a great one so far as Albrecht is following oh, there's him. A, there's a crash at the back. Robert Simkins is off. There's a few cars involved. It looks like Barry West, Simpkins, I think Herner involved in there as well. So a couple cars out in this 22 car field. Well, not necessarily out, but certainly disadvantaged to the track where you don't want a car that is ill handling, Mick. No, and it's it's especially tough with a lot of 79 because of the cold tires at the start of the race, Joe. I was just, um, you know, I was really hoping these guys were going to make it through there. You know, the, the amount of practice these guys have put in and then to have it end on the first few corners, you know, it's a terrible thing to happen, but hopefully they can get out again. So you see them start to pick up speed, and then the leaders already breaking on their way into Ehrenberg, and they plunge downhill into compression now through the foxhole. Albrecht very much giving chase and holding on to the back of Bycroft's. Fernandez behind them as well is just about a second behind so he could catch back up here it looks like he's still waiting for those tires to get warmed up and now they slow back up as they take it through Audenauer Forest just nice on ball there with Sergio unbelievably committed now you have to be these guys and the tires are warming up now already even at the start of the race now Carl feel a lot better now just watching a lovely view now of all these cars yeah it's just unbelievable joe this this track we haven't spoken too much about the place yet because of the time but it's just unbelievable 154 turns as you said um it's going to be a real challenge today let's see if anyone can keep up with steve bycroft because uh watched him earlier in the race today and uh he won it by a good chunk so let's see how i get on we got vascalampi on screen he's being chased by toikola and san filippo Probably our closest fight at the moment since the leaders have spread out. And honestly, if you look at this, that is a real train of cars. It's not just San Filippo back there. I see John Stevens, Timothy Reed, Kendrick Taylor. They are just packed in behind. Yeah, you could you could always say it goes back to position 18. But uh, yeah, let's get up to the front, Joe. I think, well, actually, yeah, there we go on screen. I was going to say we were watching for the helicopter there for a little bit. Just to show you how long that train went back. Already, though, our leader's starting to pick up speed. I feel like maybe this is some of the... Usually we talk about passing spots being breaking into corners. I almost wonder, Mick, if, if more of the passing is going to be done here where they start to get the car wound up. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, yeah, it's, that's exactly right. And a lot of these guys will be um, just waiting until they get to the, uh, the huge long straight that we haven't mentioned yet at the end of the lap. Um, it's just a waiting game. You, you just have to really try and see if you can keep up with the guy in front of you um, to get a nice toe down a straight. Not many people would be doing any passing maneuvers on this. You know, you call it the infield part of the track, but you know, it's, it's so big. You know, um, well, let's head up. Let's up uh, Gerno now. Yeah, where is Frisha? He's sitting in fifth. Today, yeah. I think, might be a little bit of a survival day for him. He's won every race that he showed up to so far. Barcelona, the only one that he wasn't here for, obviously can't win that one. Could this finally be the day that someone has able to best him? You were saying that Steve Bycroft has been incredibly strong all week. Yeah, I was looking at his um, qualifying um, pace earlier um, today, and he was a full second ahead of, um, I think it was uh, Sergio. 
Um, and that's just insane. I mean, uh, the guys at the, this this qualifying session for this week is different. You can spend as many times you want qualifying. So um, it's not done before the race as we've just seen. Um, so the guys get a lot of chances to put a qualifying lap in and, and to, to pull out a second in front of anyone. I know it's a long track, but Jesus, that is really hammering it. I, I can't wait to talk to him about that in the interview if he comes in. Yeah, already he's got a second and a half over Albrecht, although had a little blink there with his connection. Not sure what's going on there. Surprised to see, well, not that surprised to see Albrecht over. Usually he is over racing in the Camel Series, but very similar car than Nissan. Obviously going to try and ply his trade here. So they come up to Swallowtail now. Another fast portion before they dive into the second carousel, the mini carousel here. Yeah, and we're still into the part of the race where tyre pressures are going to um, matter, you know, uh, between cars, you know, by, from now until the end of the race, we're going to find out who, who ran a different set of tyre pressures, who was quicker at the end of the race, who's quicker now. Um, this is all going to play out, Joe. And here is the Dottener Hoa, the longest straight on the track, but it is uphill. Let's see who's close enough to get a slipstream. I see actually Matt Wood on Sergio Fernandez. He's about a second back, and that is still pulling him in. This is for third place. There you see that is Wood in the blue and white machine, and then in the Williams, that is Sergio Fernandez that he's catching up to. So that gives us a good marker there, Mick, about a second back, and he's already catching him. Yeah, he's uh, he's about eight miles an hour faster as they head into the uh, the end of the lap now. It's going to be the last chicane, and uh, that everyone was one lap of the Nurburgring. Uh, it's just insane. Yeah, by Croft, even on the starting lap, six minutes to get around. Albrecht still chasing him as we watch this train of cars coming around what is called T13 which uh, apparently the T, I'm trying to remember what it stood for. It's uh, some car manufacturer, I believe, and uh, 13 was the number of the stand next to that, apparently, from what I've been told. No, I don't, I don't know any of the corner names here, Joe. I, I normally <laughs> replace the names with That's swear okay. words. <laughs> I totally understand. Um, so we jump back to third place once again. Wood already dropping back in just the first few corners here at the start of the lap. So Fernandez seems to be a little bit better in the twisty bits, but now they're going to pick up speed once again. Through flute keep... plots up to the Swedish cross. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just keeping an eye, a little eye on uh, Marco San Filipino in 10th position now. He's right on the back of John Stevens, and uh, John Stevens isn't too far away from Sammy Toikawa um, in 8th place now. This, this looks like it's going to be a nice little battle to brew up. And as they break into Ehrenberg, nothing there. We're still watching Wood. I think we got time because I'm not sure we've got too many battles at the moment. Let's take a look at the replay of the accident at the start. I actually didn't get a good look at this here, Mick, so this will be my first uh, chance to see what happens. We're getting that spooled up. Here we go. Remember, Simpkins involved here. There he is on screen. Still waiting for that green flag to drop here in the replay. Not missing anything out on track right now. Almost went three wide down into that first corner. That could have been hairy. Simpkins oh, got, hit. got hit. He got hit. Yeah. And then he was parked right in the point of the track where two cars were coming in as well. You know, they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, that was a shame, wasn't it? I'm trying to figure out who that yellow car is. And that looks like Barry West and the blue machine that uh, it shoved off track, unfortunately. Oh, no, it's, it's West and the yellow car. And then someone else also getting involved. Wow, that is a shame that it started out like that. But, you know, that's kind of the nature of the beast with this track, Mick, that uh, everybody knows it's it's on that first lap, there's a high chance that you could be taken out just in the blink of an eye. 
That's right. Yeah, and a lot of guys will actually be thinking um, of joining this race. I mean, I, I don't know about you, Joe. I mean, between this and the uh, Nissan GTP, I, I'd, I'd say this is one of the toughest combinations in sim racing, bar none. Um, it, it really is tough to get these cars around here. These high grip cars are, you know, you just lose grip for just an instant, and that's it. Your race is over. You know, you can see now where the, how close the barriers are everywhere. So yeah, so a lot of guys will join this race thinking. You know maybe i can just grab a few spots here with trouble ahead of me so um so a lot of guys will be in that mentality uh it's just a shame that it happened at the back of the grid for those guys but there you go that's how it happens here as we've jumped to this battle for seven vascalampi leading twickala uh stevens and san filippo still they've dropped the car behind timothy reed so it's less of a train just four cars fighting for it They're out of the carousel almost to the highest point on the track now They continue to climb up and over Hoa Acht. And it's going to be all downhill from here, quite literally. Through Vipperman. Very blind crest around this right-hander. Toikala actually dropping off a little bit from Vasco Lopi now. And John Stevens starting to set him up. You talked about the lack of space around here, though, Mick. I, I mean, from your perspective, is it better to stay as close as you can to that car ahead and risk getting caught up in whatever happens to them? Or do you need to give them a little bit of space? Well, th my mindset is I normally try and leave a gap to the car in front as I'm starting the lap. And then I want to be right on his gearbox as we hit that last straight just to, just to be able to pass. And then, of course, you got the trouble of if you're in front of that battle, then you are pushing like mad to keep away. Um, and that's another whole uh, story of um, disaster, you know, potentially, you know, as you, as you head around the next lap. So it's, uh, it's just, it, like I say, this is, this is one of the toughest things you can do on a sim race, the, uh, sim racing rig. It, it's just absolutely unbelievable how tough this is to drive. Um, just watching uh, Filipino there. Uh, yeah, really lost the back end as he went through the second uh, corkscrew there. And Quickle is already two seconds behind Vascal Lampi. We'll see if this is enough for a slipstream, if he'll gain any. We'll keep an eye on it as they come down the dotting of Hoa. John Stevens definitely close enough to Toikola. And of course, San Filippo, he is going to be reeling them in. Yeah, John Stevens not really gaining much of a speed advantage. Um, it's only a couple of miles an hour faster. So maybe just a hit of a slipstream for Toikola then, giving him a toe. Maybe that's stalling Stevens out, but he's now got him in a little bit closer as we ride on board. Sammy is going to hold on to this eighth position. He's up top. You can see Steve Bycroft set the fastest lap this last time by, but we're still waiting for a bunch of cars to be able to come through. Yeah, Steve Bycroft's 3.6 seconds ahead of Albrecht now. It's, um, he's really got this place nailed, hasn't he, Joe? So he's got it, got it down for sure. So no overtake amongst these three, but they've lost touch with Vascalampi. There was only two tenths gained that Sammy Toikola was able to run him down. Let's take a look at Bycroft, though, with his pace. Almost four seconds now that he is ahead. Past fluke plots. This is another one of those very, very fast portions of the track. It doesn't look very straight, but you are flat out all the way up here. Can you keep it flat through this left-hander, through through the Swedish cross? Yeah, you can pretty much keep it flat. Well, I could in qualifying trim uh, with Gernot set, what he kindly shares every week. Um, I wonder if we could get an onboard of Steve there um, to our director. It would be really interesting to see how much steering input he puts in the car as he uh, hammers it around him. You can hit, see him now just hitting that left hand and now hardly any steering input there now touch the curb on the right missed that one on the left again so smooth there down to second gear i think this is for the guys and then hard on the power on the way out of this one now and I, honestly joe I, I can't emphasize it enough it is his steering inputs tell you a lot um he really is uh really is comfortable with this with his car and track combination yeah, I don't think my hands would be nearly as smooth. No, I, I'd have a nosebleed. I'd, I'd have a beard six foot long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it, it really is tough. 
Let's take a look at Frisha, uh, because he's also losing touch with Matt Wood, even. He's still in fifth place. Gernot is uh, about three seconds back. There he is on screen. This, this gives us a, a time to transition to uh, the points, which we didn't get to cover in the pre-race, because he is leading the championship. That's why we make such a big deal about this. If we could have a moment to take a, a little glance at what's going on in the championship points, at least with the drivers uh, for now. It is Frisha up at the top, and Wood is chasing him, so it's important that Matt is in front of him right now, but it's only going to be a small gain if Matt stays in fourth place because he's 64 points behind. That is a full win behind Frisha right now. Kocha, an even bigger gap back, but he's tied in fourth with Steve Bycroft. This will be a huge gain for Steve, of course, and then Sergio Fernandez, a small gap back uh, in fifth place. Yeah, just one thing to note as well, Joe, um, and it does does um, affect these races. Uh, and obviously, a different championship. These races are run on the official iRacing servers, so there is an official iRacing championship, and the guys do uh, get involved in that, you know, um, and Matt Wood's leading that championship. Um, by quite a bit, um, so he has done some uh, some nice uh, uh, high strength field races this season. So so Gernot might be thinking about that as well. That's a good point, and uh, that is the classic teams championship. Today is the Sunday Grand Prix series where they only count this strength of field race. So we've been riding on board with Steven, still trying to uh, do something with Toykala. They've got up to the top where they now hit Style Strecker here and it weaves back into the carousel. Yeah, really close battles, isn't it, Joe? They're, they're almost too close. Oh, San Filipino's come out the corkscrew there. and Yeah, that really hurts your lap time if you do that. The car just gains a bag of understeer when you do that. And uh, some, well, most of the time you're lucky not to hit the, the arm car on the right-hand side there. Yeah, that loss in um, a second and a half on yeah, Stevens. It, yeah, it, it really does. It really hammers it. It really ruins your whole lap that does we're going to jump a little bit up uh, to Matt Wood he could get another position forward to gain yet more points on Frisha because you can see that is Fernandez just ahead of him less than a second up in front and the car was wiggling all over sorry Joe I was going to say the car was wiggling all over the place uh, Fernandez really trying to get on the power as hard as he could but um, I think he's actually hurting him I think as Matt Matt Wood's actually caught him a bit. Just to add to the complications, even though it's not un, un gainly hot, it is a little bit warm out here. It's about 94 degrees Fahrenheit on the track surface. Is is that where it starts to get a little bit slippery, Mick? Yeah, I would have thought so. It, it all depends what you've set up your car for. So if you've set up for this sort of temperature, then you're fine. But as we know, we, you don't know. Ah, oh, let me just explain. Yeah, this I think this is run on um, default weather, isn't it, uh, Joe? I can't remember if it is or not. So the guys would have um, would have been running this this weather all week. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's the case with the Nurburgring. Yeah, it says weather constant, so I think yeah. you're right. Good call on that one. I've forgotten that they, they have it a little bit different here. Looks like Sanchez has had a problem. We'll go to that in a little bit. Uh, Xavier Sanchez down in 18th is suddenly in the pits. We'll see what his wreck was in a moment. But I want to see if Matt Wood is able to catch here and make an overtake. I think it's going to be a uh, too wide situation going into this last chicane, I think, Joe. He's got a good run, but he's going to stall out a little bit unless we get a lift. Nope, that looks like a lift from Fernandez. He doesn't want to be too wide. He's going to let him through. Yeah, big lift from Sergio there. Oh, and meanwhile, just behind them, did Stevens... No, Sanfilippo has managed to catch up to Stevens. That surprises me. John must have dropped off a Toykala by a huge margin. Sanfilippo yeah, I think, caught back up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, because um, uh, Toykala's still there. Um, John Stevens is still with it. They're, they're all together again. I, I think um, Sanfilippo just uh, had, a, had a really good last uh, sector there, you know? Um, he was quite a long way back, wasn't he, after he came out the court screw like that? Let's see if we can get a replay at Sanchez's wreck. Uh, let's, let's look at this. I think this is coming out of Flans Garden. He's uh, the number four car. Looks like we'll have to back up a little bit more here. 
Yeah, here it is right here. Oh, that's yeah. the grass. Yeah, that's all it takes, doesn't it? Um, yeah, just a rear wheel on the grass. Spun it's it so easily and... done here. I'm, yeah. I'm actually surprised not more people haven't done it, to be honest with you. He's our latest DNF today. Uh, Simpkins is the last one still running. He actually still has to overtake Sanchez because it's been a 14 minutes of, of repairs for Simpkins. But this is the battle that has entranced us so far. John Stevens trying to overtake Toikola while also holding off San Filippo. Yeah, this run down the hill is one of the fastest parts of the circuit. And this little left-hander they're coming up to now. You can hit the curb on this left-hand side. They all choose to miss it, which is probably wise. All oh, down nice. to second gear now. Not, yeah, nice little entry there from San, uh, San Filippo. Maxed out at 170 yeah. miles an hour at the fastest point there through that valley. And five laps to go might not sound like a lot, but again, it's only an eight-lap race today. So the drivers still have more than half the race left to go. These three have been glued together pretty much since the start of this thing. As once again, they plunge downhill. So much elevation change. It literally is up and down a mountain. Yeah, there's nothing between these three, is there? They're, they're absolutely uh, exactly the same all the way through this, uh, through the twisty part of the circuit. <laughs> A quick update, uh, I'm uh, not sure that we necessarily need to go to it, but Matt Wood, after he's gotten by Fernandez, he's pulled a gap of him on him by about a second and a half. So he might be able to pull away, and he's about a second and a half back from Albrecht. So I wonder if he's even thinking second place now. Yeah, he was a second faster than uh, Justin on that lap as well, so, um, so I can see him catching up definitely. Um... Yeah, really nice drive by Matt. Um, he's on it today. Um, not sure if you've got the... Well, I'm not sure anyone's got the um, speed to catch up with uh, Mr. Bycroft up front now. But yeah, Matt's going for it. Yeah, Albrecht is already nearly seven seconds behind our leader. But Matt Wood looking to move forward here. Can Fernandez maybe try and ride the toe a little bit? Can he keep up with a slipstream? Yeah, he's just losing touch, isn't he, Joe? Um, there wasn't much in it between the lap times, but yeah, that gap's there, and, um, and Matt's, Matt's a lot closer to Justin than, than uh, Fernandez is, is close to Matt, so so I think it's on for uh, Matt Wood here with Justin Albrecht. Uh, it could be the battle for the race here. Looking through quickly to see who our biggest gainer is, and... I almost, I want to say Steve Sarles, who's gone from 22nd to 16th. Yeah, not sure if he missed the wreck at the start, Joe, um, but it sounds like he was in that sort of area of the grid, doesn't it, if he started that far back? Yeah, I'd say he did manage, uh, it looks like he was one of the cars that slipped through. Rohner, who is just behind him, started 21st, so similar amount of gains for him. And they're trying to catch on Bill Tyler, who's sitting in 15th just ahead. As far as drivers, though, who would gain I rating, quick shout out to Timothy Reed. He's got the number 18 on his car, which is uh, their numbers are determined by their I rating in this split. And he's sitting in 11th position. So back to that battle for, for uh, ninth position now, really, because Toykel is starting to pull away, and San Filippo is all over the back of John Stevens now. This is up and into Swallowtail. Track crests heavily over here, very blind corner before, once again, into the carousel, the mini carousel, rather. John Stevens going to start having to hustle because Toykel has a gap of about two seconds. We saw before, that's hard to regain in San Filippo. He is right underneath that rear wing. I think we're gonna be seeing a change for ninth here. 
Yeah, wasn't it San Filippo who had a bit of um, trouble with the top end of the car though, last lap by? It's going to be interesting now to see as they go side by side who's got the fastest car because it's all in the, all on the downfalls now, these two cars. Got a nose ahead. Like he's just got it, doesn't it? Yeah, he's just getting it. It's going to be a game of chicken. Look at them. They're on complete opposite sides of the track. They're not willing to risk getting close to one another. And I think, yeah, San Filippo's got it. Finally, he's able to make the pass. It took him quite a while. So can he try and run down Toikola as well? Because Stevens certainly seemed to lack the pace here in the last uh, lap or two. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see if Stevens can keep up now um, uh, during this lap. Oh, he's run really wide there. So Stevens has got a massive, uh, massive advantage now as they head, to, head down to this right hand. Well, I don't know the name of. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is where the track really starts to slow up, weaving back and forth. Let's take a glance farther back, because I think we're going to have an overtake for 15th. Steve Sarles and Bill Tyler. Did Bill Tyler just get this, actually? I th oh, looks like he successfully fended off Steve. Yeah, Tobias Rohn is not too far behind of these two guys as well, so... Uh... It's going to be interesting to see. Oh, he's really hard on the brakes now, Tobias, there into the left-hander. Um, just sort of <laughs> did a little bit of wall of death around the outside there. Nice on-board shot. Look at the front suspension of these cars. Hardly any movement now is to hit these corners. It's all downforce, all ground effect. Just touching the curb on the right-hand side there. Looking at that elf front, that elf rear wing of the car in front now. He's really concentrating. He's got a nice run of it. Nice run as well. As I head down. This is coming towards Flute Plots. Ooh, it was a bad exit out of the corner from Sarles too. Roder knows it, but he's got nowhere to go. He's not willing to risk it. He is going to get the slipstream though through here. He can just hold on withstanding the wake of the car ahead. Picking up speed once again, 160 miles an hour, 170 miles an hour as they start to climb, but Rohner not looking quick in a straight line as, as Sarles starts to pull away. Yeah, it's uh, that's great driving by Sarles. It just shows you the difference in the guy's setups. Um, obviously, if, if your car's quicker on the top end, it, it means you've got less downfall. So Steve's doing a really good job keeping up with the guys. Um, he's quicker down the straights. You know, this car hasn't got as much grip in the corners, so... Really well done to him for uh, being able to hold it, uh, hold Tobias off there. Tobias Dang. should catch up in the corners now. Look, looks like he is absolutely. He's got right back underneath him. Wow, just such a significant difference. And Sarles also fell off of Tyler, who he was getting close to. It's got to be hard to figure out that trade-off around this track because the straights are so long and it is much easier to pass through there, but boy, do you not want an ill-handling car through this portion. No, as, uh, I'd say as long as your car's balanced, you're fine, but, you know, you, it, what do you want to do? Do you want to have a quick car in the corners or do you want to have a, a quick car down the straight, you know? It, it's just a choice you have to make. And, uh, yeah, it does, does look like Tobias is all over him now. Mind you, uh, Steve Stiles is all over the back of Bill here, isn't he? Yeah, once again, he's caught him back up, but then he lost ground out of those slow corners. It seems like it's the very slow corners that the car just doesn't seem to have mechanical grip. Yeah, that's the trouble with this car. It's got no mechanical grip whatsoever. Um, um, I'm just thinking, I'm just I'm just sort of uh, thinking ahead now. Steve Stiles is just going to swallow Bill, T uh, Bill Tyler up on that straight when he gets down there. He can just keep close enough now as they run down all the way down to the straight at the end of this lap. Um, Steve's going to fly past Bill. Yeah, let's let's stay with this. But just a note, I was watching Wood and Albrecht's timing. I think Wood's in the same situation. Matt is quick in a straight line, but Justin starts to pull away from him when they get to the curves. All right, up the hill, very steep climb. Not as fast, but a very long, flat-out portion. Ooh, big lift. Oh, no! And into the oh. wall, tumbling around. Rohner is able to avoid it, but Steve Sarles finds his race unceremoniously ended. Takes a toe. It is too damaged to continue.
understeer Joe it was just understeer and that left hander you see it now look it just turns nothing happens no grip whatsoever on the front end of that car this is this is a corner name you'll want to remember Mick because appropriately it's called Bravery Corner the I didn't curve. know that I didn't know that yeah and wow unfortunately a little little more bravery than grip for Steve back to our leader Steve Bycroft has been actually holding station, interestingly, ever since he's gotten the six and a half seconds ahead of Albrecht. I wonder if he's managing the gap at this point, not trying to push the car too hard. Because he hasn't he hasn't gained any more. Yeah, uh, just before the uh, Steve uh, Souls crashed, I li did look at the lap times and he was out to seven seconds. So, um, so yeah, he might be taking it a bit easier now. He, he can afford to now. Um but still, have to say, I'm I'm really impressed with Steve this uh, today. It's it's just an unbelievable drive. When we looked at that on board shot of him driving, it's just um, it just looks like he's driving with one hand, doesn't it? Interesting note as well. I had a chance to watch Albrecht and Woods' top speed here on the Dottinger Hoa. Woods got about three miles an hour more than Albrecht at top end, so he does have a speed advantage. It's not major but it's been enough to allow him to gain in the quicker parts. We're going to look at it for San Filippo and Suarez as well. Now, San Filippo, actually, no, we want to... Uh, now, why do we see for San Filippo and Suarez? Because those two are not next to each other. Oh, no, the, oh, we have two San Filippos. Excuse me. Oh, oh, and they come together. Off and into the wall. That is uh, Suarez. Pablo, unfortunately, is facing the wrong way now. He had a hard lick into the Armco. San Filippo, you have to wonder how much damage is on his car with the contact they made. My apologies. I, I was thinking Marco San Filippo, and that was Dan, Danilo San Filippo that we were watching there. I didn't know we had two San Filippos. Yeah, I didn't either. I wasn't paying attention. We had to kind of rush into the race here today, and we didn't get a good look at the at the grid. You know that that is maybe a good example of why we saw. I believe it was uh, John Stevens and uh, and Marco San Filippo giving each other a wide berth earlier down that straightaway. Speaking of Marco, he's having a much better race than uh, Danilo because he's caught the eighth place Sammy Toikola. John Stevens actually had to come into the pits uh, and get some repairs done. Not sure what happened to him. Let me see if I can find out what happened here to the number 14. Checking to see if I can find a major incident or if it was just a small touch. Yeah, not sure if it's worth a replay. It was coming through the mini carousel. Stevens, when it, he did exactly what you were talking about, Mick. He, he drifted out of the banking and just smacked it into the Armco and it was too much damage. Yeah, it, it's, it's really easily done because you're obviously traveling into that corner at your speed where you think you're going to stay in the carousel and once you get flipped out, you know, you, your car's going miles too fast to stay on a flat piece of track. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it really is easy to do there. So this leaves us with really the best battle being the one that we see on screen. Tobias Rohner now up to 14th from 21st. He's chasing Bill Tyler. Rohner is now our hard charger. Going to try and see if he can overtake Bill Tyler, who started 19th, another driver who's had a lot of gains. If you're in that situation, if you're Bill Tyler, Mick, do you do you try and fight hard to hold on to that spot, or do you think, well, I've gained five. There's really no point. I just want to see the checkered flag. Oh, no, no, no. You want to hold on to that spot. I mean, for me anyway, I always want to fight. It doesn't matter where you are on the grid. <laughs> um, I, just, I just noticed one thing, Joe. Um, I, I can't remember how exactly how long this track is is it 14 something miles um 13 whatever miles it is long. um 
Yeah, um, the lap times between the two guys was one thousandth of a second last time by. Hmm. Goodness. <laughs> Wonder what, what the difference is then there. So someone who is good at math in the peanut gallery. Oh, it's got to, yeah. Second. It's got to be a wing. It's got to be the front wing, hasn't it? Something like Not that. Not even that. I would think it's like an yeah. inch or something. Because that's it's exactly, and I, I'm ashamed to know this. That it's 12.94 miles here around the Nordschleife uh, for this layout. So, somebody who can figure out uh, what thousandths of a second over 12.94 miles at, uh, let's see what the lap times were. Joe, don't tell me you're going to be able to work this out, please. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to. <laughs> well, I'm trying to give the the audience the information. Which two drivers? Which two drivers was it? You were saying a thousandths a second apart. Tobias and Bill Tyler. So last lap it was uh six seventeen five two one and six seventeen five two two. So there you go, audience, if you're willing to do the math on that one to try and figure out what the the difference is. See if you can get it worked out by Alton Park next week. <laughs> <laughs> Still chasing him though. Bill Tyler and Tobias Rohner fighting for what is thirteenth place out on track. With three laps to go, now we're starting to get towards the tail end of things. Last driver running is actually Robert Simpkins with that 14 minutes of repairs. He's still back out and going. Nice bit of wing damage. Look at the state of that. Yeah. Both on the front and the rear. Lord knows what this, the suspension is like, but he's still going. Last lap uh, was a 6.35. Just to give you an idea, though, uh, our leader, Bycroft, ran a 6.02. So that is uh, a whole 30 seconds slower than uh, our, our fastest driver on the track right now. To tell you what he is dealing with. Meanwhile, Bill Tyler heading out of Bruchen and now up through the ice curve. Well, get a little bit slippery through there because he's way off the apex. I get the feeling that Rohner is waiting for the uh, Dottiner Hoa, that long stretch up at the finish of the lap. Yeah, I think Tobias is uh, doing going to do exactly that. I think he's probably thinking that he's a little bit faster on the uh on the main part of the track so he'll go for the pass i think this lap and and try and get the gap and then and then hopefully get the position that way um he did get a toe you know i know it was only a thousandth of a second but he did have a toe didn't he so <laughs> tells you something as well <laughs> oh that was a big slide up through there from bill tyler through gallows hill that's going to compromise his exit here you don't want to do it too early. You don't want to go for the pass too early, Tobias. You want to wait until you can make it without any uh, worry that Bill's going to come back here. But it, Bill's, it got, does... Bill's got a bit of a top end here. Well, I was going to say, I, I couldn't tell if Rohner maybe lifted a bit to, like, let him get away like you were saying. No, he didn't. He's, he's flat to the floor. So, oh, boy, Rohner with the wrong setup here. You can look at the difference. Even though he was right up underneath the rear wing, 171 miles an hour for Tyler Rohner, topping out at about 165. Well, that's yeah, got to be frustrating. Uh, Mel Chester racing on the back of Bill Tyler's car. They've done a lot of work on that DFV this week. Uh, that's got some serious grunt, hasn't it? But uh, yeah, Joe, in all serious now, Tobias has got to change his plan. He's got to do it in the, uh, in the main part of the track. He's got to yeah. get it done before the straight and get a gap as well. Yeah, he's got to find some corner where he can manage to outbreak him and then start to stretch away as well. Because if if he's, gosh, he lost, what, about half a second? If he's within, I'd say about a second and a half, he's just going to be sucked in. Yeah, he needs to do it at the first part of the lap. He needs to do it now, to be honest with you, to be able to get that gap in the twisty bits when he's got downfalls. Here we go. It's uh, looking quite tasty down here as they go over the flip bats in a second. Um, but again, Bill's going to have that top end to get away here. Yeah, it's, this is where it starts to speed up. Oh, but he looked quite more confident there through flute plots. 
He is. Uh, if he doesn't get a slip stream, stream through here, I'll be amazed because he's tucked right underneath that rear wing and he's still starting to lose. He's he's on the red limiter. Gearing. He's, oh. Yeah, he's bouncing off the limiter. Interesting. And Bill will love it. Bill will be loving that. He'll, he'll see it. <laughs> you can see absolutely every pixel of difference in your mirrors, can't you? Um, Bill will have a smile across the, across the whole of that car. Yeah, once again, it's going to get quick here down through the foxhole and compression. Got a little Bill was well from... out of shape then, wasn't he, Bill? Yeah. He Got just hit that curb from... on the left, yeah, and, and you're really flying down there, you know, it's, it's really tough. But again, you've got a nice little straight now for Bill to get uh, stretched legs of that car. Um, Tobias will be thinking, how the hell am I going to do this? <laughs> Uh, got some word from John Stevens uh, about his incident, said uh, that he was in the wrong gear going through the carousel, hence why it slipped out of the curve, out of the banking, and wound up into the wall. Right, yeah, I can understand that. Um, yeah, if, if you're not in the right gear, you, you either don't have the drive that you need on the rear of the car, or if, you, if you've gone down a gear, which might be what he did... Um, you know the back end locks up um he did understeer off the track it looked like didn't it but um so maybe he was in a uh, a higher gear than he should have been maybe he should have gone down to fourth gear there so we continue to watch this fight for 13th i'm keeping half an eye on matt wood and justin albrecht wood frustratingly is just hovering at about a second and a half back he's it's obviously ebbing and flowing between them with the speed difference in a straight line But Justin yeah, Albrecht like... has been keeping him at arm's length. Yeah, he's done really well, Justin, as today. Um, just watching Sergio behind Matt, he's uh, it's still all around the same lap time. So that yeah, he's not he's not um, catch up with Matt really. Matt ran really wide there through the corner, but the car actually jumps there on that corner there. Yeah, this is that... a tough part of the circuit down this hill. So quick through here. This is the Beloff S, named for Stefan Beloff, who held the lap record here for a long time. And the Porsche, I believe it was the, the 962, I want to say. Yeah, I think that you're right, they, yeah. They did run uh, prototypes around here at endurance races. God, I, I, I just, you talk about that. I, I, I can't fathom trying to race prototypes in a competitive setting because, of course, Porsche retook it in their modern car, but that was on a closed course in a very specific setting. This was in qualifying that Beloff set that. Yeah, it's well worth watching um, watching that on YouTube. Um, yeah, I mean, these the, the prototype cars w would be, uh, what, 300 horsepower more than the 79? And not too Something much difference like in the weight, I guess. Just ridiculous. Get an idea. This was in the 80s when he did it, yeah. Bycroft on screen, seven and a half seconds, so he's gained a little bit more time over Albrecht when, since we last looked. And I think, is this the white flag we're getting here? Yes, indeed. One more to go. I said it was a race of survival. Well, we've lost Barry West, Kendrick Taylor, Javier Sanchez, Pablo Suarez, and John Stevens so far. Steve Sarles also still taking repairs. So not sure that he's going to be able to get back out to do anything. I'm just stuck here watching Tobias now. He's uh, he's on Bill Tyler's gearbox. He's all over the, the back of this car now. He's just lost out to him. He was really close um, over that little bit of the lift and where, you, where your car gets really light. And now, now we're going back to that step on the Bell off S, as you say, Joe. There's a bit of a gap between the two now. But um, yeah, last lap coming up for these guys. So Tobias is... He's going to have to do it in the in the early part of the lap and get a gap. Otherwise, Bill's going to get this. Yeah, and, and he's actually not looking very close. And Bill is pushing. Look at that. Bill's car wobbling on its way out of the mini carousel. This time, a lot more confident through Gallows Hill. But, oh, he's and, lost and it, though. Wow, yeah. but... Massive understeer for Bill there on the last corner there onto the straight. So that gap's just come back down, but... Here we go again with Bill and we've his uh, excellent top speed. I was going to say, it's a moot point because he was well far enough away. We've seen Rohner much closer than that coming uh, off of a corner and still lose ground. 
It's just it's four good. miles an hour. That's the only difference between these two cars down the straight. Four miles an hour. But look at Bill disappearing at the distance. Rohner is going to be going back to the drawing board on this Nürburgring set and probably lengthening the gears a little bit next time. Yeah, he's pushing hard. You see him through the last corner there. A real understeer moment there for Tobias. Um, yeah, he needs to get it done. He'll know this. Uh, they'll both know what's going on now. Um, Bill knows that Tobias has got to get it done on, the, on this part of the circuit now. So Tobias is going to be uh, really pushing for this now. Oh, he's taking a massive chunk of curb there. Bounced right over it. Where can he find this? Where can he get it done? Credit to Bill Tyler here. Just dealing with a lot of pressure. Now he hasn't been mistake free. This is but he's Joe. been able to hold runner at bay. Oh, it is. Uh, does he have enough though? Still just can't do anything about it, can he? Just not there. The car gets up to top speed. And this is where it tops out right about here for Rohner. 66, 67, just not enough. That must be such a horrible feeling in Tobias's car where he's banging on the rev limiter there. Probably banging on the steering wheel too. Yeah. <laughs> Wanting to go that much faster. Down through the foxhole. They a both took a curve. huge amount of curve there, didn't they? I, we're, I think we're both in trance just yeah. watching the battles. <laughs> How oh, is this going to play out between them? Tobias is really pushing. He really lost the back end of the car there as they came out of that. Uh, it was, I think it's a slow second uh, second gear corner then for the guys. Um, yeah, really on it. I mean, both of these guys are really on it. Now, look at Bill understeering into the middle of the track now. Tobias has caught right back up here. I, want, I, I, I wanted to say, Joe, I think he should have tried to do it earlier. I mean, I know it's tough, but I mean, this is where the track really thins down. It's so tight in this part of the track. Um, and it really doesn't get much wider until you get to the straight now. Um, so I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be tougher than ever to get alongside. Oh, Tobias. Oh! <laughs> we wow. caught it. Oh, my goodness, that car. Oh, and we've had a wreck. Vascalampi. Vascalampi. Let's take a look at the replay out of the carousel. I think he lost traction and he's going to hit the wall pretty hard on both ends. Yeah. Got on power too early. That's all that was, Joe. I've done that so many times in the Lotus 49 and every time you do it, the same thing happens. The car just doesn't like it. You're coming out of that carousel and, and you've got the transition back onto the flat track and... Uh, yeah, if you've got your foot down too hard, the car just doesn't like it. And they, these are little things that show you how hard it is to get around this track. Um, you know, these guys are making it look easy, if anything, today. Um, especially if you look at up, up the front of the guys. Uh, it really is tough. Um, I'm sure you know yourself about that. Yeah, it's it's frustrating. And that promotes Bauman, Toikola, and San Filippo. No, actually, I think just Toikola and San Filippo. So 7th and 8th for them. But I think we've got to go to Bike Rock because he's on the Dottinger Ho and the gap's gone down. It's down to five seconds, five and a half seconds to Justin Albrecht. Wonder if Bycroft backed it off. Oh, and, and Bill Tyler and Rohner just went side by side, but Rohner wasn't able to make it stick. He was trying for it. He almost yeah, he was had going him. For it. Yeah, he was so close there. He really got a really good run for the last corner before that. Um, Bill was a little bit wide. But yeah, this, this is such a great battle now. All right, we've got to go back to Steve Bycroft because now he is for real finishing this lap. Up oh, sorry, Tobias is off. We, sorry, and we can't go to it now. We can't go to it now because Steve Bycroft is taking the victory with a checkered flag waving for the number three, his first win of the season here in the Sunday race. Albrecht's going to manage to take second over Matt Wood, who will get a podium and finish ahead of Freesha for the first time on Sunday this season. And did Rona have an off? Is that what you were talking about? Yeah, he had an off. He, he was 
far too early on the power coming out one of the corners. Um, yeah, and he lost it. Lost it bad. He hit the wall. We've got uh, the real replay shame there. here. Trying to figure out where this is exactly on track. Is this out of Vipperman? <laughs> I think this I think this might be out of Vipperman. Oh, that was a very hard hit. He gets it going. Car is limping though, but he is now gonna be the last car on the lead lap. Yeah, Freesha, he just had his foot down a bit too hard there. Sorry, Joe. Freesha finished in fifth in the end as they continued to come across the line. San Filippo. Danilo San Filippo. Going to manage 11th despite his contact earlier on. Quiet race from Parigi behind him, uh, getting a 12th. Then you get to, of course, Tyler and Rohner just completing things behind them. We're going to let them trickle across the line. Let's take a quick break, though, here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the official results as well as driver interviews. Stick around because you'll see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC on your screen. Welcome back to the Nürburgring. We just watched round eight of the season for the Sunday Grand Prix series. And the Lotus 79s, some of them made the checkered flag, some did not today. Steve Bycroft wound up taking the victory in the end with Justin Albrecht about five seconds behind. But we, we seem to feel that Steve maybe had a little more in it, just wanted to try and bring the car home since he had a victory in his hand. Uh, Matt Wood with a good third place, but he was tantalizingly close to trying to battle with Justin, just couldn't get within range of him. He did pass Sergio Fernandez, though, and eventually left Fernandez in the dust with Gernot Frisha finishing in fifth place. Chris Bauman with a sixth today, and Sammy Toikola uh, eventually climbing up the seventh due to others' misfortune, but not a bad run. Marco Sanfilippo for the P8. Timo Vascalampi, a wreck on the last lap. He said it was due to a lack of focus, uh, but he finished ninth because of that. And Timothy Reed rounds out your top 10. Danilo Filipino, San Filipino, sorry, Danilo. Uh, in 11th place there. Um, this is where the, the meat of the race, wasn't it, Joe? Um, Alessandro Parigi in 12th. Bill Tyler, great battling with Tobias Rona all the way up to the end last lap there. 
unlucky for Tobias. He lost it on the, on the last lap there in 14th. Keith Herner in 15th. Robert Simpkins uh, wasn't he the guy who crashed in the first lap for a couple of seconds uh, in 16th. John Stevens ran wide in the fast right uh, left hander. Sorry, 17th. Pablo Suarez looks like the guys that didn't finish now. Pablo Suarez 18th. Steve Siles in 19th. Xavier Sanchez in 20th. Kendrick Taylor in 21st. And Barry West in 22nd. Just to tell you how long the lap is, uh, even though we took our break, Simpkins is actually just now finishing the race uh, because of his damage. But driver who finished long before him and took the victory today is Steve Bycroft. Steve, your first victory of the season. It seems like you were incredibly strong compared to everybody else around here. Would you consider yourself one of the ring specialists or or do you don't think yourself as, as particularly good at this track? Well, I won last time we were here, so uh, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of turning into a ring specialist, I guess. We talked a whole lot about setup here today just because we could really see the difference in a straight line between a lot of drivers. How did you approach this? Did you go for a little bit more wing on it to, to be able to stretch away in the twisty bits, or did you know because of some of the long straights that you needed to, to really give this thing a, a high top end? Uh, earlier in the week, I was, uh, I had the car trimmed out a lot because I was thinking, you know, uh, straight speed, you know, is really important here. But for some reason during the races, the track seemed to get really greasy and, uh, grip, you know, would become a real problem like the last three laps or so. So then I was slowly starting to put more wing on each race and then, uh, you know, Justin, you know, he's really fast. I noticed in uh, practice, because I hadn't seen him on track yet, but I saw his times, you know, on the qual sheet. And he was running really high downforce, and I thought, uh-oh, that's going to be trouble because his tires are not going to wear. So at the start of the race, I was just trying to build a gap because I knew the last three laps or so he would be a lot faster than me, so... Uh, I think he had probably had the right strategy considering, you know, what, what the track was doing. Well, that's interesting because we thought that maybe you were just backing off a little bit to make sure that you bring it home. So Justin was legitimately faster. That's an interesting revelation. Next week, though, it's it's going to be a similarly narrow course, but not nearly as long heading over to Olton Park. Can you can you continue this strong performance? No, I don't think so. Ulton's pretty, uh, I don't know. For some reason, I have the worst luck there. I, my pace is okay, but uh, I just don't have any luck there. So uh, we'll probably see uh, Gerno and Matt and maybe Sergio probably fighting for the win there. Well, uh, you and me both, buddy. I, <laughs> I, I have a horrible reputation at that track as having wrecks instead of finishes. But still, today, it is time to cheer before you have to deal with that sort of misery. So take some time to celebrate, and hopefully we'll get to see you next week. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. That was our winner, Steve Bycroft. Uh, everybody else seems too exhausted, Mick, to come and talk to us. So that's the last of our interviews. I think we're going to be closing up here. And, uh, of course, we want to thank the Lotus 79 community for bringing us back for another season of coverage. But also a thank you goes out to the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcasts. We've listed them here on your screen. Additional thanks go to Junior Lond, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. And thanks to the team today, Mick, um, er, Mick Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at Global Sim Racing Channel. Or you can check out our social media. Our Twitter is at GSR Channel. Facebook is Global Sim Racing Channel. And Instagram is GSRC underscore Graham. If you'd like to support the channel, go check out our merchandise store, gsrc.storeenvy.com. The link is in the description below. And make sure and subscribe to GSRC. We've got a big red button just below the YouTube video that says subscribe. Click it in this moment here on GSRC. The next race, as we mentioned, we're going to Olton Park. That'll be at Sunday or on Sunday, February 9th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. But we also have upcoming races for other series listed on screen. So check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.